Russian President Vladimir Putin seems immovable as his country faces unprecedented and severe economic sanctions. Putin is warning the West those sanctions will backfire and send prices in their own countries through the roof. He says Russia's economy will, quote, adapt and emerge stronger. Vladimir Milov is a former Russian deputy minister of energy. Since leaving the Russian government in 2002, he's become a vocal critic of Putin. He joins us from Lithuania. Hi, Mr. Milov. Good to meet you. Thank you for joining our program. My pleasure. I wanted to first ask you about an observation uh, some analysts are making about Vladimir Putin and, and the degree to which he is perhaps surprised by the strength of the Ukrainian resistance. Do you think it's accurate to say he would be surprised by that? I think he faced a lot of surprises in the recent couple of weeks. First, uh, the low capabilities of Russian army, which clearly seem to be not so much ready for a real combat, uh, as Putin's generals have reported to him. Second, of course, uh, the degree of Ukrainian resistance is a huge surprise to everyone in Moscow. If you only watched uh, Russian TV propaganda shows of the past few months, they have been essentially mocking the Ukrainian army, basically translating the message uh, from the Kremlin. And yet another issue is the severity of Western sanctions, which are crushing run Russian economy, even as we speak. I also think that was not expected neither by Putin nor by his inner circle. I wanted to ask you about how effective you think those sanctions are or will be. We're actually back to the late Soviet times when we really did not have food in stores, basic supplies in stores. You probably remember all these pictures with empty shelves of uh, Soviet grocery stores. We're going back there. Uh, we're going to, um, you know, several dozen percentage point inflation. Uh, we already have shortages of basic food and consumer goods, goods uh, supplies in uh, many Russian regions. But this is just the beginning. I think in uh, two, three, four weeks time, we'll experience an economic shock uh, that is comparable only to the period of 1989-91, uh, the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union. And do you think that will apply the necessary pressure to Putin? Yes, because uh, he doesn't have tools to fight with his difficulties. He really believed in his rainy day fund, uh, the financial reserves of the Ministry of Finance and the Central Bank, which have been effectively blocked uh, by the G7 sanctions against a Russian central bank assets. He can't use that now. Uh, basically, the only, the only way out for him is to print money which leads to hyperinflation, as we all know from the experience of uh, early 90s. So he doesn't have many options on the table to contain this economic tsunami that is coming. And uh, I know from a lot of my former colleagues who are still at the state service that there were no contingency plan. Uh, they were not prepared for this level of severity of Western financial and economic response. There is little they can offer, or Putin's government can offer in return. You're obviously, given your former role as uh, Deputy Minister of Energy, familiar with the significance of energy to the Russian economy. The U.S. and Canada have blocked imports of oil and gas from Russia. Europe is far more reliant and has been far more reluctant to do so. Do you think that in any way uh, negates the potential impact of sanctions or, or will they still be as effective as hoped? No, that, that will uh, double down on the economic effects for Putin uh, from Western sanctions uh, already before the U.S. and Canada had announced a Russian oil and gas embargo. There has been voluntary restrictions imposed by traders, refiners, shippers all over the world. In the first couple of weeks uh, since the beginning of aggression against Ukraine, uh, Russia had lost about a third of its daily crude and petroleum product exports because of the voluntary self-imposed uh, restrictions by market players. Now this is uh, even going to increase further. So Putin's going to lose a lot of cash uh, because of all these different restrictive measures that will definitely not help him to weather through these extremely challenging times. Uh, you note, and, and many others have as well, that the West response has been uh, severe and, and unified. I wonder, though, if your sense is that they, they didn't think he would do what he's done. 
Well, there has been uh, some reports, uh, intelligence assessments that uh, Putin's full-scale aggression against Ukraine is possible. And, you know, the swiftness with which the Western sanctions uh, were introduced, the uh, incredible coordination in all these measures tells us that the Western governments were like more or less prepared for this scenario. They, will, they were not caught uh, absolutely unprepared for this. But generally, I think the predominant mood would still that Putin would refrain from this most extreme scenarios, which means that with all these uh, negative predictions materializing, we can unfortunately expect more bad stuff from him, which requires applying even more pressure, doubling down on pressure to contain his potential malign actions in the future. What does more pressure look like? And when you say expect more from him, do you mean going beyond the borders of Ukraine? Yes, and uh, I really expect a direct military confrontation between Putin and NATO countries. I think we should not treat this emotionally, but we should calmly prepare for that sort of possibility, which to me looks like a prevailing uh, certainty at the moment, uh, over 50 percent chance. Why do you have that sense that it, that it's uh, over 50 percent chance? Because that I just want to emphasize that for a second. You, you know, we're a NATO country. There, there's been this delineation offered by many politicians. We're not going to do a no-fly zone because it's not a NATO country that, that uh, has been attacked yet. Why, tell me why, if you can, you have that sense that Putin will go that far. Because in the mind of Putin's elite, uh, this is not just a propaganda cliche that they are translating. They do not really believe that uh, uh, there's an independent government in Ukraine. They believe that Ukraine is a West client, client state. So essentially, they already believe that they're at war with the West. They're absolutely angered with Western response uh, to Russian aggression. They really want to punish Western countries. So I'm currently uh, speaking to you from Vilnius, Lithuania. I very seriously assess, uh, for instance, the possibility that Putin will attack one way or another the Baltic countries, uh, either through acts of sabotage or directly. There is also an increased great possibility of an accident because uh, Putin's planes, missiles are flying in very close proximity to NATO borders. So that uh, uh, type of accidents might lead to escalation. There are uh, plenty of options, but the bottom line is that Putin's uh, ruling elite views this war as actually the war with the West and Ukraine as Western proxy, which means that one way or another, it's uh, very uh, reasonable to expect that they will step over and move further in retaliation to all these uh, serious restrictive measures that the West have been taking against Putin's regime recently. And just before I let you go, Mr. Milov, when you say for Western countries not to be, I think you used the word emotional, but, but to kind of prepare for it, what, what does that mean? That means uh, the, the scenario should be on the table. None of the containment options, none of the confrontation uh, scenarios should be excluded. I don't want to scare anybody, but uh, Listen, uh, nine years ago, one of uh, Putin's uh, uh, close allies, Dmitry Ragozin, who is now head of the Russian Space Agency, uh, had sp spoken with a lecture uh, which was titled, Russia would lose a war to America in six hours, where Ragozin actually laid out all the strategic weaknesses of uh, the Russian military. So I think uh, all the, uh, Putin wants to scare the West, to intimidate the West, to create him advantage on this global uh, geopolitical battlefield. I think the main uh, issue is uh, to demonstrate that nobody is scared and the response for various scenarios, however undesired, is still there and the response will be swift and will be very severe, will have important consequences for Putin. Mr. Milov, thank you very much for your insights. Pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.